who's here wants to change? Raise your hands. Well, I am all about change. I am an entrepreneur turned politician. Why? Why I join politics? Well, I'm not someone who craves for power. And being a politician is never my career plan. It's never been part of my career plan. I was a conference organizer. I founded TEDx Taipei since 2009, curated over 400 talks and over 100 events over the last eight years, built three companies, and was involved in a bunch of civil activist movements. If I am an entrepreneur, I ask myself, what is my duty to society? Do I just build business to sell it? Do I just build business so I can raise more money for the uh, shareholders and for, my, for, my, for myself? I ask myself, why do we exist? And what is the story we want to leave behind? So why I join politics? Let me explain to you. On March 13th, 2014, a group of students broke into the windows of Executive Yuan, Taiwan's highest administrative building. The students not only broke into the building, they took over the, the parliament. Thousands of students took to the, to the streets of Taipei, protest against an unlawful passing of a bill regarding cross-strait trade deal. There were protests not only against trade deal, but there were protests against generational injustice. My office was just located somewhere down the streets where the protest was happening. The parliament came to a halt for almost 30 days. I would walk down every day after work to visit the students and to provide food and the water to them. And I, I chat with them. And I realized that this is not just about the trade treaty that was unlawfully passed within the parliament. It's about younger generations wants to change, wants to have a better tomorrow. At that time, I felt a strong sense of urgency and I felt a great worry for my country, for my society. I decided if I was an entrepreneur, if I want to change the status quo with real action, I should get into it. I used to be one of those, sitting on the streets, protesting, and going against the machine. I'm always outside of the castle, hoping that to burn the castle and throw weapons inside. And yet, this time, I'm going in. I'm hoping to change with my entrepreneur spirit. In November 2015, I decided to accept the nomination by KMT to run for a, a large parliamentarian uh, seat. On February 1st, I became one of the youngest member of parliament and a legislator for Taiwan. <laughs> my mission with this role is not about congregating power and then having more influence. My mission is about using technology, innovation, and education to maximize the do good and the contagious influence around society. During my first congressional appearance, I demonstrated a device that is called SafeCast. SafeCast is a device designed by Mr. Joey Ito, director of MIT Media Lab, to, tr to trace the radiation emission in the wake of Fukushima, a nuclear power plant explosion. It was during the time when Taiwan had just suffered a great earthquake. This, this was a week after the earthquake. Hundreds of people lost their lives. I questioned the government, how come we don't combine technology to trace these earthquake uh, happenings, as well as to prevent the disaster uh, relief and to better assistance. I show it to them and I told them that this government is failing because we are sitting on a pile of technology without knowing how to use them. I think the world is not linear and yet our government and our organization are built in a linear fa faith. So the people who work in the government, they work for a long time, they move up and they have more power, they cling on to their power, they don't want to give up because that's the only way they believe a linear path will lead them to the top. But I believe the future is open. The future is a complex one. 
is so complex that we cannot use yesterday's thinking to solve tomorrow's problem. Why is it complex? I want to ask you, is our society, our country, or our current world operating system ready for the future? Self-driving cars, the technology that's going to happen pretty soon, um, it's going to hit the road in a foreseeable future, maybe in a few years. And I just learned that Singapore has just uh, made the law to legalize self-driving taxi to hit the road. Robots. Robots will be the assistance for mankind. But is our law ready for a robot world? Pepper, designed and manufactured by Foxconn and SoftBank in Japan. They will provide daycare, healthcare, and patient care, and everything. So what is government left to do to cope with the new world? I like to think, use these nine principles to illustrate a complex system that I believe that will take place for the future. Mr. Joey Ito has been my personal uh, mentor for a few years. He has this nine principle when he took over as the MIT Media Lab director. These are resilience over strength, systems over objects, disobedience over compliance, pull over push, campuses over maps, emergence over authority, risk over safety, practice over theory, and lastly, learning over education. I feel these nine principles are not isolated silos. They are not independent. They are interconnected. They are interconnected that the world is actually moving so fast in these nine principles in a way that we are not ready for it. Our system is still designed with independent silo thinking. Different departments, they don't cooperate and they fight for each other's um, benefit. So these nine principles led me to think what would be some of the most important leadership styles for the future, for an open, complex system and a, and, and a uh, technology-driven society. I like to think that today's leadership requires a new form of dialogue, requires a new form of narrative. It is the one that changes politics with entrepreneurial spirit. I want to call for more entrepreneurs to use your skill sets to change politics because that's the only way we can break down the barrier and take down the, the castle that we think they are them, we are our, ours. So what is this new narrative? What is this new dialogue? There are nine uh, qualities I like to illustrate and with some examples that I am working on and I would like to share with you. Open system. Obviously, I talk about an open, complex system for the future. A leader must embrace the world is going to be an open and uh, um, complex system. Think like a startup and act like an entrepreneur. Nonlinear path, you should always think that you have nothing to lose. Act on it. Act on any actions. Iterative thinking, I think this is a very foreign language in the arena of politics. How do you iterate your policy so that it's best understood by public. Think ecosystem. Most government agencies or government uh, departments, they work for their own benefit. But ecosystem, what is it? You should allow big and small to coexist. You should allow the trees and the weeds and, and the different, different kind of species to exist in the, in the ecosystem. Living in beta, this is the, one of the most important qualities I believe for the future leaders should always have. When I speak about this, nobody understands what I'm talking about. I'd like to sh give you some example later. Small and nimble. Government should remain small. We should have a small government, not a big government. Conversations and community. So living in beta, what is exactly, how does government live in beta? Could it be a, some sort of a, a system of software, ERP, some sort of procurement deal that always live in beta? No, it has to change from the mindset from the top down. One of the projects I initiated as an entrepreneur and a member of Congress in my country is I built a platform to um, talk about and initiate a uh, sharing economy. This is a platform that I built uh, within my, uh, my apartment. It's called Shareable Cities. What we do is we get together policymakers, legislators, and the designers and coders and programmers 
And within two days, we come up with a hundred app ideas to make the city a better place to live. So these are some of the apps we do. Within 48 hours, we have 12 apps uh, out of a hundred ideas that were born there. So some of these apps were funded right away by the government. They were given grant and implemented. Some of them try to solve city's parking problem, housing problem, and, and, cr and criminal problems. Another thing is, how do we exactly iterate public policy? How do we engage the public to talk about social issues? And then to make sure that these are not just some sort of top-down policy that we impose on the, on the public. A platform that we built in Taiwan called V Taiwan is uh, created so that general public can upload their ideas and then legislators and uh, governments, ministers can talk about it, debate it online. I'd like to show you some example. Uh, I apologize for the Chinese interface, but uh, that's what we used there. Um, we, there we, show, we were talking about should we legalize Airbnb? There's a big debate on Airbnb and Uber. Should Uber should be legalized? So we, up, we upload those information, and then we have a lot of uh, discussions, and we also uh, invite legislators and uh, ministers to discuss it. So these are some of the uh, um, uh, proposed proposals that were demonstrated by the public or in terms of what is their opinions, and we use a data visualization to kind of correlate what is exactly is the public opinion. Things like this were actually used as the discussion content in the parliament. In a way that my hope is to make the Congress more open. In a way that it's an open dialogue, it's an open Congress. Lastly, I want to leave you with a quote by scientist Mr. Carl Sagan. Imagination will often carry us to the worlds that never were. But without it, we go nowhere. I believe that in today's world, politics needs imagination. And we need un more entrepreneurs getting into politics and change the landscape of politics. Thank you very much.